Morning to the Minister, Working Pensions Secretary, of course, Mel Stride. Good to see you. Thanks very much Good indeed morning. for joining us. Lots to talk about. We'll um, come on to politics at home momentarily, but first, let's talk about um, the images that we've seen of dead hostages uh, released by Hamas on uh, Monday evening. They have a version of uh, what's happened. What's our government's view? Well, that we need to move as quickly as we can, clearly, to an end to this terrible situation. Now, we have a situation in Gaza where Israel has quite rightly uh, taken uh, action. We want to move uh, to a point, and we're working very hard with the Americans and other partners through diplomacy to try and do what we can, to a stage where we do have that sustainable ceasefire. But that does require uh, the release of the hostages, it does require a state where um, Hamas, uh, that is calling for the destruction of Israel and carried out these barbaric acts on the uh, 8th of, uh, of October, um, lays down uh, their arms and we move on to get the humanitarian support uh, that we need uh, in place and uh, to move on to resolving this situation. But it's absolutely tragic when you see things like sure that. Is, um, sure is. Terrible, spoke terrible. to um, a lady yesterday whose uh, brother is still being held, she thinks, in the tunnels. Um, talk to us about the Houthis. Uh, another strike yesterday um, on an American vessel. Uh, what are we going to do about them? Well, it's absolutely right that we should pursue a path of uh, self-defence. We are being attacked, not just ourselves and the Americans, but a number of other... Uh, countries whose shipping has... Well, let, let's see what the continued reaction of the, the Houthis is, but we do stand uh, ready to make sure that we uphold the freedom of navigation that this country has stood up for for a very long time and that we make sure that shipping is able to pass through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. And that's important, Kay, economically as well, because at the end of the day, if we do have uh, too much of our... Uh, containerized traffic having to go around the Cape of Good Hope with all the extra sure, costs, the extra exactly. insurance costs and so on, that could be an inflationary pressure amongst, uh, alongside anything else, and that's something we really must uh, avoid. But we have a right to self-defence, yeah. and we will uphold the freedom of navigation. Does that mean more strikes possible, then, is what you're saying? Well, we have not ruled anything out, and we stand ready with our uh, allies, principally uh, the United States, to make sure that we do what is necessary and proportionate <laughs> and within international law to make sure that we keep... Uh, that, that, that trade moving through the Red Sea. Where are we on the post office scandal? Uh, we know that Alan Bates and others, including the chief exec of Fujitsu, also the chief exec of the post office, giving evidence to MPs across the road a little bit later on mm. um, today. I spoke to a victim of the post office scandal yesterday. He says the post office is no longer fit for purpose and it should be boycotted. Well, I think what is really important to the many hundreds of people who have suffered most grievously over this whole situation over many years is that it's resolved quickly and satisfactorily. And that is why we have uh, made very clear statements about settling and bringing forward <coughs> settlement schemes. Uh, we are uh, also going to be uh, making sure there's a situation where we uh, pardon people who have been put in that uh, terrible, exonerate them that have been put in that uh, terrible uh, situation. As regards Fujitsu, there is an ongoing independent uh, inquiry at the moment under Wynne Williams. Uh, we need, I think, to wait until that concludes. That should be sometime this year before we then start coming to uh, opinions on Fujitsu. But uh, Kevin yeah, Hollingray, when you know, I was a... asking you about the post office and whether it's still fit for purpose. Well, there are going to be many, many lessons to learn about the post office and the uh, independent inquiry, I think, is the right vehicle to really nail down what those lessons are. It's been very thorough. We set it up because we recognised sure. the issue some time ago. We're all barroom lawyers, though, aren't we? Year. We're all barroom lawyers. Mm. Um, do we think, uh, from what we've seen so far, you know much better than, than me and, and um, our, our viewers this morning, I'm sure, uh, whether or not there should be prosecutions? Because, prima facie... Another barroom lawyer phrase, it, yeah. there should be. Well, and, and it may be that there are. That now some of those of their criminal matters may be, may be matters. Oh, absolutely. And my heart goes out to those people who not only often lost, lost their livelihoods, but are also shamed in front of their, their own communities. Some I mean, that lives. is a terrible, terrible situation uh, to have had to have faced. But that's why we have moved so swiftly to make sure that we bring justice, that we exonerate. Uh, those people as quickly as possible, that we have the right compensation schemes in place so that we're able to compensate people uh, as quickly uh, as possible. But what about those possible. being brought but to... But as to justice account, and yeah. what may follow, I do think it's important that we have a thorough 
independent process, and we set that up some a uh, couple of years back to make sure that we have a really thorough investigation under uh, a very eminent retired judge, Wynne Williams, to sure. make sure that we get the answers, and then, of course, we can make those judgments. Yeah, but you would support prosecutions. Well, if the, if, 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 if the, if the evidence decided. and the circumstances and what comes out of the independent inquiry uh, strongly suggest that that is the right way to go, then that may be the way that it goes. But I do think it's important that we wait until we see the results from that independent inquiry first. Now, what are you going to do about those um, pesky deputy chairmen like uh, Lee Anderson and Brendan Clark-Smith? Should they be sacked for voting for amendments to the Rwanda Bill? Well, look, I, I understand why they and others feel very strongly about the legislation that's going through Parliament, because we are all united in very firmly understanding that we need a deterrent, and the National Crime Agency has made this clear as well, in order to break the model and stop the boats coming across to should they our the shores. Line? So, well, those, those are matters for, uh, for, for others, not me. But the important thing, OK, is that so we have... have the really important thing is that we have a very clear plan here that the National Crime Agency says we need a good deterrent. We know with our Albania returns policy the impact that kind of arrangement can have. Well, we've seen a 93% drop in the number of Albanians coming across here. Because we have a clear plan, we have an opportunity now yes, to so really make progress. Case, Unlike, could I just say Labour? Case, I, mean, I, I think this is important. If go on. May. Labour have no plan. Keir Starmer has no well, plan. When Labour's on, I put it to them. No, I Minister, I'm putting it to you, the government's view, and the fact is yeah. that you need... The, the, the Prime Minister needs the support of the party at the moment. You're absolutely bleeding um, support in the polls. And he doesn't need people like Lee Anderson and Brendan Clark-Smith causing him problems. So... Where we are absolutely united is we all understand within the Conservative Party, Labour don't get this, but we get it, that we need a very clear plan that's going to deliver a deterrent that will break the model. So what we don't want to see is more of those heartbreaking situations we had where people dying in the dark, in the channel So you don't over have a view weekend. on Lee Anderson? So, well, th 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 those are matters uh, for others, not me, but the important point is that we have a really clear plan to deliver a deterrent. I'm confident that we're going to do that and we will see those numbers come down. And the alternative really is the Labour Party, Keir Starmer, that has absolutely no You're plan. And we're just going to I end can up, see what you guys are doing. Well, we're going to end up with open playing borders. Playing the man, not the ball. But that you? is a, a distinct difference. And right? that's what we're going to have for the next few months. Talk to me about real-time pump prices. Well, uh, they, they will go up and down with uh, the price of oil with a uh, lag. This is one of the reasons why it's so important that we are intervening so decisively in the Red Sea to make sure that we don't uh, see a situation where 15% of the movement of oil and other goods going through the Red Sea is interrupted for any longer than it needs to be so that we can keep those prices down. But can I just say on prices more generally? Yeah. We've seen inflation, Kay, fall by over 50%, meeting the Prime Minister's target early. And that's really significant, because that's putting more money in people's pockets. We're also seeing real wages increasing. Uh, we're also seeing very high levels of employment, low levels okay. of unemployment. Now, that's not happening by accident. That's happening because we've got a very clear plan for the economy. I believe we're turning a corner. We've got a brighter future ahead of us okay. if we stick to that plan. If we go for Keir Starmer's so situation, else, there'll be no Keir plan and we'll Starmer. be back. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. but we will. We'll be back to square one. OK. Something that is also helping your party is boundary changes, of course. Why do boundary changes always benefit the Tories? I'm not sure that they always do, actually. No, I and I certainly... I, I have a number of colleagues who, if they were sitting here, would very strongly remonstrate with you and say that well, uh, it hasn't uh, uh, helped them. But, look, there's a rationale for boundary changes, which is that through time, every ten years or so... Uh, because people move from one area to another, some seats get over-representation uh, and some uh, have under-representation, and it's important that we uh, equalise those factors uh, out, with one or two exceptions, mm. the Isle of Wight being one, and I think the okay. Orkney's. Um, right but, but this is an independent process. It's really important to stress this. The Electoral Commission is not in hoc to the government, far no. from it. They but I think take you get advice. an extra ten seats, something like that. Well, that, that may be what, what, what happens. We're out but, of time. But, but You're going to get you... me in trouble with well, your well, well, the counter-argument is if you left it as it was, it wouldn't be fair because some parties would lose out because there wasn't a proper distribution of, okay. of the electorate. How are you we, feeling we about the new set? That. About what, sorry? Our new set. I love it, actually. Yeah. Well, it sort of breathes a bit more. It... And, and I rather like being up at a counter. Yeah. 
You know, it's just... You need a beer, don't you? Yeah, well, well, I do, but I've, I've got your finest tap water here, <laughs> so I can't complain. You know? It's good to see you. Thanks indeed. so much indeed for joining nice us. Thank you.